everyone, this video is on energy and work done on charges in electric fields. By way of review, when a charge is placed inside an electric field, it is acted upon by an electric force, otherwise known as force, due to an electric field. And the magnitude of this force is equal to the product of the charge, Q, and the electric field strength, E. So greater the charge or stronger the electric field will result in a greater force acting on the charge. The direction of this force depends on the nature of the charge, that is whether the charge is positive or negative. For a positive charge, the force will be in the same direction as the electric field lines. And in the case of an electric field between two parallel charged plates, this force will be towards the negatively charged plate. For a negative charge, the force acting on it will be in the direction that's opposite to the electric field lines towards the positively charged plate. In both cases, the force vectors are parallel to the electric field lines. Now, recall, whenever a force acting on a mass results in displacement, S, work is being done. Energy is transferred into the charge when it is acted upon by this force due to the electric field. And precisely, we can calculate this work done by multiplying the force by the resultant displacement multiplied by cosine theta, where theta is the angle between the force and the resultant displacement. Now we can substitute force by the expression QE, as this force is due to the electric field, and we can also substitute S with the more commonly used symbol D. D here is the displacement of the charge due to the force. So if the positive charge is initially placed here in the electric field, and due to the force acting on it, it travels a distance of displacement of D to reach the negatively charged plate, then this D is what we will use as a displacement to calculate the work done. It is important to remember that in this instance, the angle, which is between the force vector and the resultant displacement, should always be zero because the force vector and the displacement vector are always parallel in the case of an electric field. So we'll obtain the final expression for work done on the charge of QED. Electric potential energy is the form of energy possessed by a charge when it is placed inside an electric field. Specifically, it is defined as the amount of work that can be potentially done by the electric field on the charge. The amount of electric potential energy ultimately depends on the position of the charge within the electric field. In the case of a positive charge, the force vector acting on it will be directed towards the negatively charged plate in the same direction as the electric field lines. And as a result of this force, this positive charge will move towards the negatively charged plate, resulting in a change in its position. Since the position of the charge changes, so will its potential energy. And the change in its electric potential energy will be equal to the exact amount of work that's done on the positive charge by the electric field. So essentially, for a positive charge, its potential energy depends on the distance the charge was from the negatively charged plate, as this determines how much change in potential energy it will experience as a result of the force due to the field. Now, it is important here to know and understand for a negative charge, the distance that we are interested in is from the positively charged plate. And this is because for the negative charge, the force acting on it will be going towards the positively charged plate in the opposite direction as the electric field lines. So for this negative charge, it will start to move towards the positive plate, resulting in a change in its position. And this change in position is again the reason why its electric potential energy will change. And the change in potential energy for this negative charge is also the work done by the electric field. So for a positive charge, to work out the work done or the change in potential energy, we are interested in its distance from the negatively charged plate because that's where it will be moving towards. For a negative charge, we are interested in the distance from the positively charged plate because that's where it will be moving towards due to the field. The term electric potential, which is represented by the symbol capital V, is closely related to the concept of electric potential energy. 
It is slightly different, however, as it is defined as the amount of work done per unit charge. In other words, divided by charge Q. Okay, so algebraically, it is given by the equation work divided by Q. And as we previously already explained, since work in the context of an electric field is also equal to the change in the charge's potential energy, we can also say that electric potential is equal to the change in U divided by the charge. Since electric potential is directly correlated with work done or the change in potential energy, it is also dependent on the position of the charge within the electric field. We can rearrange this equation to make work done and the change in potential energy the subject. This will be equal to the product of charge and the electric potential. Once you understand what electric potential is, potential difference, which is again a common term you'll come across in physics, is quite literally the difference in the electric potential of the charge between two points within the field. The electric potential depends on the position of the charge within the field. So if I have two positive charges at two different positions within this field, they will have two different values of the potential. Let's call those V1 and V2 respectively. Since we said the electric potential is equal to the work done divided by the charge, the work done is also equal to QED divided by Q. So this way, the Q in the numerator and denominator will cancel out, giving us an expression for the electric potential as E times by D. So for this positive charge up here, the electric potential is equal to the electric field strength multiplied by D1, where this is the distance of the positive charge from the negative plate. For the second charge, which is closer to the negatively charged plate, V2 is equal to the same electric field strength as we are dealing with a uniform field here, multiplied by D2, where D2 is the distance of this charge from the negatively charged plate. The potential difference is simply the difference in the values of these two potentials, V1 and V2 respectively. So we can say that the change in potential here is also equal to ED2 minus ED1 if it was to move from this position to this position due to the field. By factorizing E, we arrive at an expression of E bracket D2 minus D1. And this is of course the displacement of the charge. So we can write the following expression by making the change in potential energy the subject. So this is equal to Q times by the potential difference. And as we just derived, the potential difference is also equal to the electric field strength multiplied by the displacement of the charge. And just to reiterate, the change in potential energy of the charge in this instance is also the work done by the field on the charge. And this is equal to the same expressions we just went through. When we talk about work done in the context of electric field, we must make a distinction between whether the work is done by the field or the work is done against the field. So in the previous example, when we place a positive charge in the field, it will accelerate due to a force that's acting on it towards the negative plate. And this will result in work done by the field. When work is done on the charge by the electric field, both the electric potential and the potential energy should decrease. And by the law of conservation of energy, the reduction in potential energy is transformed into the charge's kinetic energy. That is, the amount that the potential energy decreases by should be equal to the amount that the kinetic energy increases by. During this process, the mechanical energy of the charge, that is, the sum of its potential and kinetic energy, should remain constant, again, by the conservation of energy. However, there's a distinction between work done by the field and work done against the field. If we want to move this positive charge away from the negatively charged plate in the opposite direction of the field lines, we need to apply an external force to oppose the force due to the electric field. When this occurs, we are doing work against the electric field, which will result in an increase in both the electric potential of the charge as well as its potential energy. All the energy that's derived from the external force is being transformed into the potential energy. And this is why the kinetic energy of the charge will remain constant. Since we are applying an external force that's outside the system, the mechanical energy of the charge is not conserved. In this case, the mechanical energy increases purely because the potential energy increases. 
for a positive charge, when it's moving in the same direction as the field lines towards the negative plate, work is done by the electric field, which results in a decrease in its potential energy. And vice versa, if we want to move this charge in the opposite direction as a field, away from the negative charge, we need to do work against the field by applying an external force. And the work done by this external force results in an increase in the charge's potential energy. This is quite the opposite for a negative charge. When we place a negative charge in the electric field, it will move towards the positive charge plate in the opposite direction as the field lines. When this occurs, work is done by the field, and as a result, the potential energy of the charge decreases and is transformed into its kinetic energy. If we want to move this negative charge towards the negative charge plate, we need to apply an external force in order to do work against the electric field. The work done by the external force against the field will result in an increase in potential energy. Let's go through some calculation examples to clarify the numerous equations that we discussed in this video. The diagram shows a uniform electric field produced by two parallel charge plates separated by a distance of 0.4 meters. The difference in potential between the charge plates is 2000 volts. So we can see here the bottom plate is 2000 volts, the top plate is 0 volts, and that's why the difference in potential is set to be 2000 volts. Because the bottom plate has a higher potential, this is referred to as a positively charged plate, and the top plate is said to be negatively charged. In this case, the electric fuel lines will be going from the bottom plate towards the top. Now, a charge of 3.0 times by 10 to the power of minus 9 coulombs is placed between the plates. It initially is at point x, and as a result, it moves upwards to y. This is consistent with the electric field lines because this charge is positive, so it will move towards the negatively charged plate in the same direction as the electric field lines. We want to work out the work done on the charge by the electric field as it moves from x to y. The work done on the charge is given by QED. The charge is 3.0 times by 10 to minus 9 coulombs, and the electric field strength can be determined by dividing the total potential difference between the charge plates by the separation distance of 0.4 meters. And the value of d here is the displacement that we are interested in. So going from x to y, this is equal to 0.18 meters as shown by the diagram. The work done here is 2.7 times by 10 to the power minus 6 joules. This means as a result of the force acting on the charge by the electric field, exactly 2.7 times by 10 to the power minus 6 joules of energy has been transferred to the charge in the form of its kinetic energy. So in this case, its change in U is minus 2.7 times by 10 to the power minus 6 joules, so it decreases by this amount, and at the same time, its kinetic energy increases by the same amount to obey the law of conservation of energy. The diagram shows an electric field produced by two parallel charge plates now connected to a 1200 volt battery. So this is the voltage of the battery, which is also the potential difference between the charge plates. In this case, the longer line indicates the positive terminal for the battery and the shorter line is the negative terminal. So this means the bottom plate is negatively charged the top plate is positively charged. A proton initially at rest is placed 4.5 centimeters from the positively charged plate. So that's this distance here from the top plate. Explain the motion of the proton. So as we already explained, this proton will experience a downward force due to electric field that's equal to QE because the bottom plate here is negatively charged. By Newton's second law, the net force, which is the electric force, on the proton will result in an acceleration. And since this force is dependent on Q and E, which are both constant values, the force that's produced by the electric field should also be constant. So we have a constant force, and by Newton's second law, the mass of the proton is constant as well. So this will lead to a constant or uniform acceleration. As a result, this proton will move in a linear motion or trajectory towards the negatively charged plate with increasing velocity due to the uniform acceleration. Calculate the final velocity of the proton. 
The velocity of the proton can be determined by considering the changes in energy of the proton. The work done on the proton is equal to the change of its kinetic energy, which of course is also equal to the negative change of its electric potential energy. The work done can be calculated by using QED, and the change in kinetic energy is half mv squared minus half mu squared, where v and u are the final and initial velocities respectively. Since the proton was initially at rest, the value of u here will be zero, which effectively renders the second term to become zero. Therefore, we can actually obtain a more simple expression in terms of v, which would be half mv squared equals to qed. If we make v the subject here, we'll get 2qed divided by m, or square root. So Q is a charge for the proton, which is 1.602 times by 10 to minus 19. Remember, this is the same value as the electron, but negative. E is the electric field strength, which will be the voltage between the charge plates divided by the distance, 0.15 meter. And D, this is what the displacement of the charge of the proton will be as it moves from its initial position to the negatively charged plate. So this value here is d. So we have to find the difference between 0.15 meter and 0.045 meter. This gives a value of 0.105 meter. This is all divided by the mass of a proton, which is 1.673 times by 10 to the power of minus 27 kilograms. This number is found in the Nessa physics data sheet. And let's not forget to square root the entire fraction. The final velocity of the proton is approximately 4.0 times by 10 to the power of 5 meters per second. Now let's not forget, velocity is a vector quantity, so what will be the direction here? Well, as we said in part A, the proton will undergo a linear motion with uniform acceleration. And the acceleration has the same direction as the force heading downward. So the final velocity will also be downward. This concludes a video on work done on energy and work done on charges in electric fields. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.